May 24th, Friday night, Stockton. We're at Stockton's Delta Speedway once again. We're in the 250 modified division area with young 15-year-old Thomas Meserol out of San Jose, California. Thomas, you were a second season driver here at Delta, but you've got a number of years in quarter midgets, and you've raced on asphalt along with dirt. How's the comparison to this little small six or eighth mile track for you for some of the other tracks? It's about the same. You know, the quarter midgets are on a small track, but they're they're flying for the size track. For the micro, it's it's actually kind of slow compared to what I'm used to driving, being on dirt and all. So it gives you the opportunity to actually feel like you're going slower in this division than you would in the quarter midget. Definitely, you know, I could almost read a book down the straightaway just because the quarter midget ain't got no straight. You're always turning, you know. You're always thinking this. It's, it's you relax in these things. You finished fourth in points last year. You're fourth in points this year, about seven races into the season. You were real strong last year in the rookie contention. This year, you look like you're going to be even stronger in the championship contention. And the main thing is last week, and that's why we're here, set fast time, won your heat, and won your first career Delta main event to sweep the division. How'd that make you feel? Well, you know, it made me feel real good, you know, coming out here. We haven't won out here. We have thought we've been jinxed. You know, we've come out here. We've been really fast, qualified fast time, won the heat, and just not had too good luck in the main. And, you know, we've been doing good previous of this these few races, and uh, I felt real good after it, you know. Got that little jinx behind us. And you've won main events at other tracks and other divisions, but coming here tonight, are you kind of pumped? You uh, kind of figure maybe you can go two for two? Yeah, you know, after the, the night after, I won at San Jose, so, you know, we're trying to go for three in a row. So, yeah, I'm real pumped. I think we could do it, too. Well, you're a solid charger out there at 15 years of age, a lot of talent. A lot of guys at 15 haven't figured out how to get rid of a comic book, let alone get into a race car. So we wish you all the luck you can get tonight. Thank you very much. Go get them. Moved over to the mini stock pits. We're here with Jim Patterson, a fifth season driver, driver of a Pinto with a four cylinder in it. Jim, I want to congratulate you once again. Last week, you've had numbers of heat wins and fast times and dash wins in your five years. But you picked off that first career main event win, and that made a lot of people happy. How'd it make you feel? It made me feel great. It felt great. That was one of our goals this year is to get a main event and finish in the top five in points. So far, we're, we got our main event, and we're pretty much locked up in the top five so far. But we still got a lot of racing to do. A lot of races left, that's true, and some pretty stiff competition out there. But as we've talked personally in many occasions before, it's difficult for me to open up records or to sit down and do stories with working with you in mind and all of a sudden realize that you hadn't won that main event. It was just, I personally believed that I had my records wrong rather than to believe you hadn't. So it, uh, it thrilled me and I know it thrilled you. What do you think about tonight? A chance of two in a row? Uh, I don't know. Depends on how dry the track gets. The car doesn't like a real dry track. So we're going to give it our best shot and see what we can do with it. And then see what happens planning on competing all year? You haven't got anything that's going to hold you out of this? It's going to cost you any points in the championship run? Nope. We'll be here every week as long as the car holds together. You know, we had a little scare earlier in the year. Didn't know if we was going to miss some races, but the guys got the car back together, did a good job. So he's back. That surprise is also. We saw that tremendous T-bone crash with Ken Beck and yourself on the front straightaway. And I, right there, I figured, well, uh, two weeks, maybe three weeks, but you were back the next week. You took that car home and slaved about 80 hours and got it together and you're back and the car obviously works right it may have bent it in the right direction because of that first main event win yep we were real worried about it working right but it worked out just fine pushed the car for a couple couple days probably about 20 hours pushing with porter powers and got the wheelbase right and she worked so that really surprised us too well and they say once you win that first one the rest come easy so we'll be out there tonight looking forward to see what you can do. Just get out there and stick the pedal to the metal and go for it and see what happens. That was that rendition. And we certainly want to give a special thanks to all veterans of our wars. This is your weekend. To those that gave their lives, we thank you. To those of those are still with us, we thank you. And one that comes to mind here locally, Master Sergeant Rip Van Winkle, right down here, World War II. Okay, down on the track, Nathan Swoboda at the back of the pack. He's over the number 30 car. That is our fast time man from Rippin' Tony Carey. 
It moves up. We'll take the 41 car, the 41X on the inside out of Manteca, a 500 outlaw kart champion. Uh, the current rookie in the division, that is Manteca driver Chris D. Ryder. Next to him in the 22 car out of Manteca, the defending champion for this division from last year, Rick De Costa. Outside front row, car number 18 out of Modesto, last year's rookie of the year, Scott Clough. To the inside in the Riverbank Express there, the 41 car tricky Ricky Rick Green. 600 heat race coming at you. And how close is it? Christy Ryder is in second points. Second in points with 126. Rick DeCosta is third in points with 123. There are only three points separating those two drivers right now. And there's only four points from D. Ryder up to the leader, David Goodwill, who's not here tonight. So a double point main event for these guys is going to make a major difference in the point standings. Six-hundred heat set for ten laps. still on. They were not watching back there on that back straightaway. I'd like to give an official welcome to our flag staff crew down there. John Marlin on the flag stand doing the official flagging duties. He is the flag man for 99 Speedway and his helper there, Nathan Swoboda. Nathan is in the learning stages and has aspirations of becoming a flag man someday. And he certainly will achieve that goal, and I'm sure he's very good right now at his age. Here they come. Green lights on, green flags out, and they're going. Scott Clark goes to the outside. Last room to the 22 of Rick DeCosta to slide by. DeCosta puts the pedal to the metal, pulls out into safe zone. Brings him around the lead the second lap of the 10 lap heat. Christy Ryder pulls out of the traffic lane, pulls up the back of the 18. Runs through it, trying to carry it through to Ricky Green, the last man in line. The Ryder to the inside takes over that second spot. Stevens, the zero of Mike Brooks Jr. We've 
got a slight change in this division's ruling so that you know as you see it occur. We are not racing to the yellow anymore for this division. They no longer race to the yellow. They're going to adopt the open wheel policy of if a yellow flag does come out, they are to slow down at that time because scoring will automatically revert to the previous lap to pick up the lineup. We don't want any of these guys getting a little wild out there racing back to a yellow and getting themselves or somebody else hurt in the process. So we've decided to eliminate the race to the yellow for these guys. So no racing to the yellow. And we get the pace quad all the way. Green flag flies. Scott and Green side by side down that back straight away. Scott with a little bit of advantage. A little bit of rubbing there as they come off the corner. Green goes to the inside. Makes it close. He takes the lead on that first lap. Scott gets on his bumper and returns the favor. Green continues to hold the lead. Chadwick moving his way, looking to the outside, slides a little high, loses a little ground. Brandon Carey on the inside. The zero car of Brooks with some type of a problem over here at turn number three. The yellow flag falls. And there would be a typical example right there. Just as they cross that yellow flag, the three car of Chadwick was taking the lead, but they will revert back to the previous lap, and that will put the three car back behind the 41 of Green. down into the corner. Chris Scott, Kellen Chadwick, Graham and Carey, your top four. Chadwick once again to the outside, slides high, doesn't gain much ground getting that far out, goes right back into that third slot, takes another shot at it down the back straight away. Green and Scott are able to keep those Box stocks right down in that lower groove, forcing Chadwick to move to that outside position. And we get Scott on the inside of Green into the corner. He's able to take the lead down the back straightaway. Chadwick follows him through, and the 41 of Green gets it right back down there immediately. Scott becomes your leader. Chadwick looks to the outside of him. It's a little tough to pass on the outside. The cars get a little squirrely and get away from themselves. By the look of it, Chadwick's got enough motor to get up there and get by. He just can't get the line to do it with. Chadwick gets right on the bumper. He says, if I can't get by him, at least I can worry him to death. Chadwick looks to the outside right now into the corner. Oh, a little bit of contact. Everybody keeps it straight. The right flag falls. Final lap going down the back chute right now. Three out of Hopi, Kellen Chadwick. Second place to come, 77 of the Valley Springs, Chris Scott. Rounding around in third, the 41 car of the Riverbank, Chris Green. And finishing in your final point position, the fourth place slot, car number 30 out of Ripon, Brandon Carey. Stockton, Calvin King, and we've got the 12 car on the Discovery Bay, Sean Dillon. At the back of the pack, the 50 of Manteca driver, Ryan Philpott. Johnny Blackwell on the quad, serving as our pace quad for Delta Raceway. Brings them around, they look them over. Nathan has the light off. Moreland has the green out. And away they go. Okay. Robbie 
Bradley turns on the after burners and says, see you guys, as he comes off the turn four down the front straightaway. Calvin King in second place, Burkott in third, Norris, Norris in fourth. Oh boy, is Billy hooked up or is he hooked up? Around the corner, hanging to the inside, car is smooth and steady. Going up on a little bit of lap traffic, he's going to make up his mind which way to go to get around the 17 of Nick DiCarlo. He goes to the outside. He's by safely. And Calvin King to the inside, Phil Pott to the outside. So your second and third place man's clear the slower traffic. In the meantime, Robbie Bailey still out there in front. Philpott sliding high off the corner, losing ground on the nine car. of Robbie Bailey, so he's controlling his own destiny as he comes around to the right flag. Just keep that thing pointed in the right direction. Keep it off the board. And your winner in the 92 car out of Stockton, Robbie Bailey. Second place to the nine car out of Stockton, Calvin King. Rounding third in the 50 car, Ryan Philpott. Finishing fourth in the final point position, the 12 car out of Discovery Bay, Sean Dillon.
Bell does it right to the foul. Looks to the inside once again, trying to get by Brian Jorgensen, and he does. Franklin takes over second place, so it's Carrera slides by on the inside to take over third. Jorgensen fights back, but Carrera holds him off. Banks comes around as you leave Dirty side up on the back straight away. Track officials over there immediately. Paramedics also over there. Throw the car over. Paramedics step up. Say, how do you do? He says, fine by the look of it because by their actions, we presume that driver is all right. And they turn and walk away, so that's a good sign right there. We'll take it that Brian is fine. points away from Gurney, so there's only a six point spread for the top three drivers, so again, double points for the main event tonight will make a big difference here. Mr. Marlin says, go get him, guys. Him over up at turn four, got the green in his hand, he shows it to him. Pete Nelson around there, lead lap number one as the rest of the pack is fighting out. Sideways, slides her over, picks a piece of that concrete, yellow flag flies. Three down, 
be down. Jerry's going to take it down the back straight away and see if everything still works. Here's one of those racing accidents. They tried to come through that corner. Hollaback came through the middle of two cars, tried to split it up the middle. That's one of those things that you can be a hero or you can get hurt. Either way, in that particular case, it backfired on him. As they came through the corner, one car slid down, one car slid up. He took a chance to go through the hole, and then contact was made. Looks like he's all right. They come around the corner. Nathan looks some over. Pete Paulson brings him in. We got a green. Clement trying hard on the outside. He makes it ground there. Paulson gets up on the board and loses a little bit of his steam. Clement Clement leads him down the first straightaway. Slides it high. Stands on the gas. Looks like he's going to take charge of the lead at this point. Six of Paulson around in a circle, sweeps the zero that looks along with him. And the yellow flag falls. Six down, four to go. Keeps it going down the straightaway. One draw yellow. Ten car of 
Andy Gallo, you know, the 31 to David Newstown right behind him. Newstead takes the lead. Gallo gets his straight away. He'll hold on to second place. The 49 of Larry Bowles runs for it. The 89 of Scott Gilligan right behind him. Well, the 49 of Scott Gilligan is going to be in the Gilligan to the inside. Gilligan has the third position. Gilligan the 31. David Newstead on the back stretch. kind of go in all directions, pillar to post. Okay, Nathan turns the light out on the back stretch, so we anticipate a start as they come around off of turn four. David Newstadt, two leaders, going to bring him in. Bring it over by Darwin and turn it loose. Nathan says, here's the game. Have fun. Steve Kendall. Followed by Manteca driver Casey Tinner in the 79. The two car out of Stockton, Jeff McInerney. The 14 out of San Jose, Ray Bunn. The 37 out of Stockton, Joe Stearns. The 63 car out of Stockton, Vern Terrell. Back to the 45 out of Stockton, Ken Beck. And the 33 car of the French camp, Darwin Davis. And then we have the tractor, Jim and driven by Jerry Long out of Stockton, but I don't think he's going to compete. I don't think he's got the proper gearing to keep up with these cars. Turn you loose, he's telling him to slow down, get him even. Lights out, 
check him out, check him out, check him out, check him out. Coming out the corner. He says, you're good. Here you go. That's right. Casey Timming gets squirreled out of the pile over there. He hangs on to it, takes it down the back straightaway. The 37 is Stewart's locks up to the 96 of Lua Villarreal. Gets a piece of the wall. Yellow flag flies. And Tua McAnally gets squirreled out of the pile. Everybody in the infield says, get out of the way. McAnally takes it around, short cuts it out of the back straightaway. Red flag, red light. Pretty good hunk of plywood laying out there. The 37 of Joe Stearns. Got squeezed out of that pack and got a little squirty. Went up there and just touched that wall enough to grab that piece and take it down the track with him. You can see where it stopped. You can see where it started. Right past the 33 of Darwin Davis. Just to the left of the other side that says McSparren Auto Glass. Is where Mr. Snowboda looks him over out the corner. He gives him the green. We're off and running. squeezed out, but he's not going to give it up. He's going to bring it around on the inside track. Make up the difference. Brings it right back out into the fourth position. Lord Terrell moving away ever so slightly as the rest of them battle it out. Leo Villarreal has second. Casey Tinnon charging hard. through into the second position, but Lou Villarreal loops it around, jams it in gear, brings it back out for the yellow flag. Lou Terrell down the front straightaway, Casey Tillman, Ray Brown and Phil Joster is in fourth. Darwin Davis comes through on the inside. 45 of Ken Beck gets it turned the wrong direction over one and two. from Nathan as the 45 of Beck spins out. Just as soon as Nathan took his eye off of him, he fired it up and away he went.
who placed to the 37 car of Joe Stearns and running out the fourth position, the 33 of Darwin Davis. 44, Rick Cristofoli, the six car of Sam Solari, the 70 car first time back for Jim Cosgrove, the 20 of Jim Patterson, the 7 of Joe Kimbra and off a turn four, the 61 of Guy Gabor. it up against that wall just enough. There's
take it back. This is not a heat race. This is a C main, believe it or not, a C main event for the mini stock division. So again, we have the 81 of Dan Bristol here. We have the 31 car of David Neustadt, the 94 of Connie Bowles, the 49 of Larry Bowles, the 10 car of Andy Gallo. set for six laps unofficially because we haven't been told for sure we believe that they will transfer the first two finishers to the back of the semi-main event and we got the word officially yes first two to the back of the B the green flag flies whoa hang on Larry Bowles gets squirted out keeps it under control stands on the gas the 81 of Bristol leads him down the back straight away Neustadt looking to the outside as it comes through the corner. Stands on the gas. He takes over the lead. The 10 of Andy Gallo slides up into second place. Neustadt and Gallo move away from the rest of the pack. Scott, the three, Callum Chadwick, the 92, Robbie Bailey, there's the nine car of Calvin King, back to the seven of Rodney Poston, the 36 of Mike Norris, the five car of Kent Stevens, there's the 30 of Brandon Carey, the 17 of Nick DiCarlo, the zero of Mike Brooks Jr. Pretty good field out there. Starter tells the youngsters one more time around, let's be ready. And Nathan is up there working the lights, and we have the yellow light out, so we expect the pace quad to pull off the track as it comes through the third and fourth corner, and they turn it loose at that time. straight away. Cars start to single file and get it away and mixing it up. A little contact there with the three in the nine car about four positions back. in the 77 car sweeps into the second place position. And the 
when his ring is sitting somewhere, Scott, they're going to lock it up, take each other to the high side. Both of them wind up being spun out the wrong direction. The 41 of Green gets into a motion, but I think we got a problem with the 77. Oop, we have the 17 of Mickey Carlo mixed up in that over there, too. Yellow flag. Once again, five down, one third of the way, five down, ten to go on a 15 lap box stop main event. Stretch it out, right down that back street away. Everybody single file, nobody looking to get by right at the moment. Fort Mott, Chadwick, King, Kerry, and Brooke shoot out by.
we have the yellow light out. Join him rolling down the front straight away, looking him over. The quad comes through the corner. He should peel off and get out of the way. And he does. And we got a green. Three laps to go. Furpot comes around, still in charge of that number one spot. to the nine of Calvin King, and I believe one official at this point rounded off the top five is 77 of Chris Scott, and they said, yes, that is official. Sweeps into the lead down the back straightaway. 